I'm back, baby. <laughs> show for you this week. I have an FO. Well, you'd hope so after so long away, wouldn't you? I get out my whip board to show you. There are more whips than there were before. Just a quick spoiler. <laughs> I have a fair few acquisitions to share with you, both in the books sense of the word and the actual squishy sense of the word. And finally, we settle down for a cup of tea and a chat about what I have been up to and why I've been away for quite a certain long. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Project Bag podcast. My name's Gemma, in case you've forgotten me, <laughs> and I am coming to you as always from my home in Kent where I live with my husband and my two fluffy cats, Archie and Kit Nine. It has been quite a while since I last sat down to speak with you and I am so excited to finally get a chance to sit down with you all again and have a crafty chat with you. So I hope you've got your knitting. If you are a new viewer trying the podcast for the first time, thank you for giving me a go. Might be a little bit delirious and nonsensical. I have had over a month off, more on that later. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so, so much for your patience with me. I know it's been quite a long time. I didn't announced that there was going to be a hiatus from the podcast. To be fair, I didn't know. Um, and also I've been incredibly quiet while we've been sorting things out. But thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for coming back. As usual, all the places you can find me are just down below um, in the description box down there. Um, and I will also endeavour to put links to all the patterns I talk about, all the designers, all the yarn dyes, etc, etc. Okay, so Let's get straight to it, shall we? I've got so much to talk to you about and I'm hoping to keep it well under an hour tonight because pressures of time, people, pressures of time. <laughs> so um, I can't actually remember what I usually do. Um, oh, should we start with some admin? Couple of knit-alongs are happening at the moment, or craft-alongs as I like to call them because we're multi-craftual here. Um, First of all, we have the fan club cal. Basically, anything you knit, crochet, spin, embroider, create, that can in any way be linked to something that you love outside of said craft. Um, so a book series, a film series, just a film in general, television, music, anything you can think of that you can be a fan of. If you can legitimately create something using fibre of any sort, then you can pop that in there. We do draw winners each quarter. Um, I drew one for the fan club Cal um, at the beginning of April. I haven't announced it on here, um, but the winner was um, Aileen, who is the little bush baby. Basically, in the chatter thread from the start till the beginning of April, I random generated it and I gifted Aileen a pattern from her wish list as her prize and that's what I'm going to be doing. So we are well into the second quarter. We need to get the chatter going again though because otherwise I'm going to have like two people to draw from. Um, the same is happening with the lace along. I haven't drawn the first quarter winner yet but I will be drawing it while I'm editing this podcast and I'm going to pop the winner along here. So same thing goes, if you are chatting away in the Lace Along Chatter thread, um, then each quarter I'll be drawing a, a winner from that. So make sure you've got some patterns in your wish lists as well. Um, yeah, so within reason, I'll be, I'll be don donating. I'll be giving, gifting, buying and gifting a pattern from your wish list for that. So well done to whoever this person is. I'll flash it up again in case I haven't flashed it up yet because I'm totally professional like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, better talk about the lace along. Anything that is lace. The idea is to push yourself out of your comfort zone though. So if you have done some yarn over lace before, then doing that isn't really going to cut it for this. So, but we leave it to your discretion and your conscience. Um, let your conscience be your guide in the words of the famous Jiminy Cricket. Um, yeah, if you know you're pushing your skills for lace, then you can pop it in. Um, just like with the Harry, po Harry Potter cow, whoops, fan club cow, um, craft along, anything 
you can you can do as many projects as you like but only one finished object post per person so you can add photos to your original post reason being is we're actually pulling from the chatter threads for prizes and if you knit in mine or ellen's yarns mrs L formerly mrs lamb's yarns here's the new name um and then you get an extra entry for the grand prize at the end of the cal. Those will both be wrapping up around the time of Perth Festival of Yarn. More about that later. And I think that's it for the admin. You know, join the Ravelry group, join in the craft alongs. It's not too late to take part. And for goodness sake, get chatting. <laughs> okay, admin done. What am I wearing? Nothing. No, I'm obviously wearing clothes, but I'm not wearing anything knitted. I've got a me made skirt on, um, but I've put on a few pounds since I last spoke to you, and I'm not standing up and showing you my paunch. That's not happening. You don't need to see that. Um, but I have a me made skirt that you guys have seen before, so if you're curious, go back and watch from a few episodes ago. Am I talking too quickly? I'm so sorry if I am. I'm just conscious that I've got so much to talk to you about and I'm so excited to be here talking to you again. I've so, so missed podcasting and miss you guys. Um, oh yeah, other one. Some of you will be watching this going, aha uh -huh, Gemma, right, okay, this is all well and good. Welcome back and all, but where's the EYF stuff? It's there, it's recorded. Um, I did run out of steam halfway through recording because I'd actually recorded episode 25 just before and it is still waiting for me to edit it, I'm afraid. It's one of those things, you know when something is just such a mammoth task and you can't quite face it? That's what's happening. I was running out of steam when I was recording so I'm not certain of the quality of what rubbish I was coming out with. I mean, we have a fair bit of nonsense here anyway. So if I'm not certain about it, let that be a warning to you. Um, and there were so many other things to cut in, like the vlogs from Edinburgh Yarn Festival, the bit of vlogging I did, um, other footage, pictures. I was going to put it all together and I just haven't had time. And when I've been at home, I haven't had the brain space to kind of face doing it. So I basically thought, whatever, let's just sit down and record a brand shiny new podcast so I can pick up and carry on like we used to. All right, so I asked if anyone had any questions for the podcast um, and I was asked, is it all Ellen's fault? Yes, it is always Ellen's fault. Where do I get my fabrics for my bags? Do I have them custom designed or do I buy online? I actually buy my fabrics from a range of sources. Um, I like to buy high quality fabric and so I do search around for it, um, make sure I have prints that I like, I don't ever buy too much of one print. Um, I am looking into having some custom fabric done but that's not for just yet. Um, I also support local fabric stores, local haberdasheries and there is a rather fantabulous market um, where I work now three days a week. Um, one of those days a week there's a rather lovely store that has vintage fabrics that are sourced from you know various places around the world so I'm going to be making some purchases to bring you some very unique project bags in the future. Next question is it all Ellen's fault? Yes it is and Ellen asked this question she asked me to flash my whip board as you can see I've now gone on to two columns oh you can see my window there oh and the camera Wave to yourselves, guys. Hello. <laughs> um, I've had to go on to two columns. I know in my head that I have got 26 whips, but I'm missing two on here. I just can't think of the last two. It's driving me slightly dotty. Um, so let's start working our way down it anyway. The ones at the top are the ones I've actually worked on. So if we look here, God, it's really distracting seeing the camera in there. We've got the spin drift and that ladies and gents, boys and girls, is my finished object with, are you ready for this, ends woven in. Who am I? We see I'm a proper professional now, more on that later. It isn't blocked because I haven't had time, which is basically almost like my mantra, my mantra at the moment. I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. It's my catchphrase, no time. Anyway, here is my completed spin drift. It doesn't look too awful for not being blocked, does it? There we are. 
ah, oh, so this is the last time you will see it. Well, I mean, I might wear it sometimes, but oh God, it does need blocking. This is my Spindrift shawl. It is by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. I have knit it out of one skein of the Project Bag Yarns in the Myra colourway, which is actually proving incredibly popular. I have knit this as a show sample because I am going to be vending at the Wool Monty in June in Sheffield. Here we are. So it's a really, really lovely pattern. If you've never knit a shawl before, or if you've never knit lace before, I can recommend it. Um, I love that Helen's done it so that the pattern actually, row by row, it tells you how, much, how many percent you've finished of the pattern, because uh, I don't know if you're on Ravelry, but if you are, and you update your project pages, which I'm trying to do, failing miserably, <laughs> you can put a percentage of the pattern that you've completed and when I first saw this I was like oh, I ain't got time for that I ain't got time but um Helen Stewart has done the work for you so it was quite nice to be able to track that not that I updated the project page enough to make it worth it but so yeah there are five kind of repeats of this eyelet pattern there is a pico god I look tired <laughs> there is a pico cast off here excuse my horrible hands there's lots of dyeing going on and yeah it just it took less than one skein of my Myra colorway and I just absolutely love it um my only criticism is it's a bit of a pain to wear I was gifted a spin drift for my 30th birthday uh, by someone I knew and I've, I've never really worn it because I just I don't know how to wear it it's quite little um so I'm <sighs> it just feels a bit up around my neck there or like a bit I mean obviously it needs blocking because it's all flipping in on itself but but yeah so I mean anyone else knit a spin drift how do you wear your shawl I'd be keen to hear so that is my finished object and I'm so proud of it yay so I can take that off of my whip board now this gives me more problems actually because when I say I've got 26 whips that is actually including the spin drift. No, not including the spin drift. So I'm missing three, three whips from my whip board. Right, next on my list is the Eloise Cardi which is what I was crocheting for um, Luby Lou's little girl Phoebe. Lovely Lou Nichols. I, she's been so so patient with me about this I nearly had it finished at Edinburgh Yarn Festival I was working like the clappers to get it done and then um I didn't quite make it and oh, I'm terrible like this I just left it then I, I left it for ages and then when I came back to it I thought I don't like this and so I ripped out the sleeve so I'm now in the position of starting the sleeve again so actually I've got less done than I had when I recorded last time not that I showed this then I don't think I showed pre-recorded stuff that was nowhere near done anyway stop wittering on Gemma and show them the actual cardigan this is a crochet project I didn't say at the top of the episode it's basically all fibre arts and anything else crafty I'm up to um, so crochet is more than welcome this is my first crochet garment although I do have another one on the hook now because why not and I'm trying to hold it up. Here we are. Isn't that so cute? This is the Eloise Cardi. And in my last podcast, I talked about how the pleat effect is achieved. So I'm not going to go on about that here. Do have a look at episode 25. Um, but it, the main body of the cardigan is completely finished. So we've got the frock skirt part. We've got the bodice. And I just love the construction of this. It's so cool. Um, it's effectively a raglan style. Do you see here? It's amazing. And it's just done in rows. Like the whole thing is done in one. All of that. Apart from obviously where I'm starting the sleeves now. That you you start and, and doing the round and go round and round and round for that. But uh, I just thought it was so clever. Um, I don't approve of the number of ends I have to weave in for these colour changes, but it's going to be worth it, I think. But yeah, so basically the, the top part of the bodice and the yoke 
is all done in one and how this is achieved is just to buy decrease double crocheting three together and it creates that which is just genius this is teaching me so much about construction and cro focus ha ah. um sorry about that crochet construction is just so fascinating um i really struggle i'm not someone who can visualize things in my head very clearly i know i know i'm a dyer what am i doing i'm a designer what am i doing but i can't quite imagine how something like this is going to come together so actually seeing it happen it's just wizardry absolute wizardry um and crochet gets a bad rep i don't know why i don't, maybe everyone thinks it's like granny squares turned into jumpers or something which it could be but it doesn't have to be and there's nothing wrong with it if you do like that sort of thing but you know so i heard someone the other day in a professional well not the other day a couple of weeks ago in a professional capacity saying that crochet garments are just hideous I, i'm sorry i don't agree with that i really don't agree with that there are so many exciting things going on with regards to construction i mean look how sweet that is i mean yeah i know it looks a bit if you're used to the stockingette appearance, I don't know why this isn't focusing. But if you're used to the stockingette appearance of fabric, then yeah, okay, a crocheted fabric might look a bit strange. But actually, there's nothing wrong with it. And this is such a sweet little cardigan. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to make one for my goddaughter as well, actually. I just think Mia would love swinging around in that. Um, I'll start it now and I'll make the age five to six and it might be finished by the time she's six. <laughs> she's she's just turned, she's two, nearly two and a half, but you know. <laughs> so that is that whip. Okay, next up, if I can find them, can't find them. Next up would have been my Dragon Hill Studio socks. I have almost got finished the second sock. I am putting afterthought heels in, can't find them, can't show you, sorry. My daughter socks, still on the needles, don't talk to me about it. Tullamine shawl, I'm looking off here, over here, is going to be brought out soon because I'm really, really excited. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but I'm doing it in truly hooked yarns and that is significant. Um, maybe if I go this way, it won't be as shiny. Oh, that's a bit better. Let's do it like that. Um, then we have the Muti Lin Cardi. I was making really good progress on that and I know I can knit that in a couple of days. But um, what's happened is I didn't knit it in a couple of days and the child it was for is now 11 weeks old and it only fits up to 12 weeks the size I'm doing. So that's coming off the needles and being recast on. The Ella tunic, I've completely ignored it as I have the Calypso Cardi, the Drops Jumper and the Birds of Feather Short. Cable Jumper has been ignored. Granny Stripe has been ignored. Nelly Socks, Ellie Selby Mittens, all ignored. Cable Baby Jumper, this is a new one. Give me one sec and I will show you. So this is the cable baby jumper. Focus please. There we are. So there is the cabled jumper. It's really, really sweet. I am knitting it from, um, I'm knitting it from Sublime Extra Fine Merino DK Yarn this lovely blue colour there it is again it's looking really lovely and this is going to be for a little boy that was born just a couple of weeks ago so i'm right up close and personal with the camera now because i'm having such problems with the autofocus um and it's this one here come on there we are obviously i'm doing the smaller version for a little one but the pattern is so creased so yeah that started last week and it's going really well so far i love cables really excited about that okay continuing with the whip board there we go uh right granny stripe being oh no i've done that shawl for an art lover nope not done a thing James C. Brett desk? No, nope. Zen Variations. This is another new one. Because what do you do when you cast one thing off? Cast on at least three more, right? Right? That's totally acceptable, isn't it? I have wanted this book for the longest time. And I didn't think that there were any left in this particular shop. Um, but when I was going through um, everything, um, basically, I'll talk more about this in a bit, but basically I've got a new job. I am now the manager of the yarn dispensary in Faversham. Yeah, me managing a yarn shop. Oh! 
It's so exciting. Anyway, I had the great pleasure of meeting Renee Callahan when she came to do a workshop back on the um, back on the 20th of April and she's coming back again in a week or so. But imagine my delight when I was going through everything and found a whole stack of Zen Variations by East London It's, aka Renee Callahan. She is just the most lovely person and I really need a cardi to throw on um, that will go with everything that I can have at the shop because it's an old building, it was built in 1240 so it's nearly 800 years old and we do have central heating but still it can get a bit chilly. Um, so I'm going to be doing this cardigan which I'm really excited about and I am knitting it from Soxier DK. One sec, I'll get a skein. Ta-da! And it is this beautiful petroly blue. It's just stunning. So there's the label, Soxia DK, Coop Knits. Um, it's so, so beautiful. And I think this is just going to look absolutely stunning. So I've caked up the first ball of yarn. I haven't actually cast it on yet. I think this is fascinating because Renee in this book doesn't just say, oh, knit this size and it's graded up. Um, it's typically by bust size, isn't it? This actually has different sizes for your arms, which is amazing because you've probably noticed, and I'm, I try and keep my arms down here because it's everyone's got that one thing they really don't like about themselves. For me, it's my arms. I, I'll be amazing at bingo in a few years. I'm ready, girls and guys. I am ready. But <laughs> I don't like them. Um, they're quite They're quite big my arms so how cool is it to have um garment that i can grade and and choose my arm size as well because that's something if i get something that's fitted around my bust typically i then can't get it on over my arms very easily and it stretches and looks and looks uncomfortable and you've got um grading for across here your shoulders as well and around your waist it's so so well done um i'm really really looking forward to getting it cast on um and she is coming back to the shop in a couple of weeks, so I might shamelessly ask her for help. <laughs> Can I do that? Hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but it's just the most beautiful cardigan, and it wraps, this is it again, in two colours. And it, oh, try not to show the secret sauce. And it wraps um, with a little pop of fastening, so it's just perfect. I don't even have to worry about buttonholes. I mean, win. Total win. Oh, I've remembered one of my whips. Hang on. Hang on, let me write it down. Nope, I lost the pen. <laughs> Continuing down the board of whips. Um, crochet summer top. Another one to show you. Not a lot to show you on this one. I haven't even got the pattern on me, I don't think. Let's have a look. I am actually swatching, guys and girls. I have swatched. I can't believe it, but I have. So this is my swatch for a crocheted summer top. I am using, and I don't have the label here, I don't think. No, that's useful. Um, Mondrial Bio, Bio Soft, which is cotton, organic cotton. It knits as kind of an Aran weight, or crochets as an, an Aran weight. It's kind of between Aran and Chunky, so I, I, I guess a worsted would be a good way to describe it. Um, but I'm swatching because this is actually going to be a garment because I now have the bug for crocheting garments. And you must think, well, you know, Aran weight in the summer, but it's cotton, so it's so light and breathable. Let me see if I can dig out the pattern. All right, I found it, but the picture is absolutely terrible. Um, it's come out really small and really dark. I don't know if you can even see that. Estus top, Estus top. Um, so it's a little top, it's got uh, a panel that's almost laced down the side and a, pa and a little kind of scoop lacy neck detail. I'm really, really excited for this one. I'm not doing it in a size that will fit me or fit my lovely mannequin at the shop, but uh, can't win it all, can you? Can't win them all. Okay, continuing, the Knitting Goddess Cowl. Nope, nothing's happened to that. Nothing at all. That's the brioche and it just hasn't been looked at. Uh, the Tenya, this is another new one. So 
the yarn shop I work at specializes in natural fibers. I knit, as you know, and crochet in a whole range of fibers. I obviously hand dye yarns, so they are natural fibers, and I would love to use more natural fibers, but I do believe acrylic has a place. So the Eloise Cardi that I'm crocheting totally should have showed you what I told you what I was using. It is Starcraft Special Chunk, no, Starcraft Special Aaron, which is acrylic. Um, but it was my birthday in April and my lovely new bosses very kindly said that I could choose um, a couple of skeins to have as a birthday gift to knit something with that I can wear obviously to work as well. Um, and I am so thrilled with this. I actually chose, and there's a bit of an odd, odd colour on there, I wonder if that's... I chose Fiverr Spates Vivacious 4-ply in the blush colourway which I think is kind of pale for me um, but it's an oversized tee and I think it's got a bit of a, a droopy, not a droopy neck but I think I can wear something underneath it a different colour with a collar or something that will maybe break it up because I don't know it's called blush which is beautiful let's have it that way up but do I disappear into it? Will I look like a floating head? don't know what do you think I haven't actually caked up the yarn for this yet I was showing it off to you in the skein so this is a fiber spates yarn um, and we stock it in store come and get some um, it's just absolutely gorgeous I think it's 100% yeah 100% superwash merino so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this knits up it is a high twist if you can see that's, see can you see that there that's actually a high twist when you can really see the plies um, and two skeins will make me a tenure. Uh, I'll put a picture here, if I can, of what it will look like. And I just think it's so vintagey and gorgeous. Um, and it'll be great for summer in the shop. Continuing down the whipboard. Um, Hayfield Baby Jumper. Nope. CC Blanket. Haven't touched it. Julian Shaw. Haven't touched it. So... What has happened? Why am I so terribly behind with all my knitting? I gave up casting on things for Lent. Um, that actually went really well. I think I've spoken about that since Lent uh, finished. I don't know when my last, oh, I know what I'm thinking. I've been doing some Instagram lives instead. Um, and I did one with Ellen to talk about the cast on. Um, cast on party and giving up casting on for Lent. Did it work? yeah it did i cast on so many things ellen decided we should have a cast on party and i'm easily swayed so i went okay let's do that um so we cast on 26 things between us so i cast on 13 or was it 25 things between us we cast on a lot anyway and the next morning i can only i can only describe it as having like a cast on hangover i literally woke up the next day like oh i never want to cast on anything again oh and even the thought of picking up my needles was just oh made me feel all woozy i couldn't handle it uh but by about three o'clock in the afternoon i was like yeah I could, I could cast on something new so yeah it's kind of like that um and my friend amy florence who you will know from the stranded podcast and stranded dye works yarn company um oh, i'm getting so fed up with this autofocus i don't know what's going on um she thought I had to finish all the things during Lent as well, um, obviously not, but something else happened about two weeks into Lent, which basically took up all my knitting time, took up all my potential podcasting time, and that is that I got the job. As I said, I've said just now that I am the manager of the yarn dispensary in Faversham. It is the most beautiful yarn store, I'll pop a picture of it here. Um, and it, it's kind of sad how it came about, but um, the previous manager actually had a turn. She, she, it's been, it's been publicised, so it's not, I'm not speaking out of turn here, but sadly she had a stroke um, and she had to retire. And her husband who managed the shop with her also has retired to look after her. Um, she's doing, she's doing well, um, as well as, as well as you can expect. And I know that some people watching this, I'm sure will have come to the uh, shop before and, and met her and know just what a warm and lovely person she, she, she is. Um, so I am very conscious that obviously my good fortune has come because of someone else's um, misfortune. 
um, to bumble my way through that. So I am I am very aware with, of that. But nonetheless, I am so excited. It is such a privilege to work there, to get up in the morning and make that drive down to Faversham, which is the most beautiful chocolate boxy medieval market town like the the architecture is just stunning there is so much history in that town there's a thriving market that's been there since medieval times three days a week it's just incredible and it's the mo it's one of the most warm little communities that i've ever come across um yeah and everyone's made me feel really welcome but it has meant that obviously I've been really working hard to learn a new business. Obviously, I run the project bag, but running a personal business as a sole trader is very different to having bricks and mortar premises to look after and staff and all that sort of thing. So it's I've been very, very busy and I'm thrilled because we are building a really good team. I have a deputy manager now um, who's come on board, which I'm really excited about, and we're filling other vacancies at the moment for some part-time staff to help us out um, and it's the future is really really bright it's a wonderful I mean it's a wonderful store and it, the work that went into it from from the previous managers is just phenomenal and it's just such a wonderful place so yeah that that's what's happened <laughs> that's why I haven't podcast um, and it was a bit of a whirlwind actually I uh I applied for the job at the very end of March and I'm so we're kind of three-ish weeks into the giving up casting on for Lent and got got a call for interview pretty much the next day had an interview on the Monday and started on the Tuesday at the beginning of April so it was a complete whirlwind I didn't have chance to come and do a podcast and say I'm not going to podcast for a while because it, it's just all happened um and it's it's been amazing it's been a really steep learning curve um sam was such a patient teacher helping me with all the bits but i'm so excited about the future we've got some amazing things lined up my first event to host was local yarn shop day which was so well attended it was phenomenal and so lovely to meet so many of the, of the regulars and we've revived knit and knit night we're, we're calling it knit and stitch night just to make it really clear that every craft is welcome you know me you know i've got absolutely a focus on making people welcome and and just making things nice and clear so knit and stitch night is on thursdays we had our first one last week we've got another one tomorrow the second one it's weekly on a thursday which is just so exciting. Um, we had over 20 people turn up last week and it was amazing. And it was so nice to get to go round to everyone and talk to them and find out what they're working on and totally avoid what I should have been working on, of course, because why not? <laughs> um, yeah, and of course I want to cast on at least six more things now, having seen these whips that people were working on. And yeah, it was it was just a really wonderful night. And I'm looking forward to the future. We've got Wild Knitting Public Day coming up and we've got a whole amazing um, list of courses. Carrie Westerman's coming back to the shop and we've got trunk shows happening and guest dyers. It's just, oh, it's so exciting. I'm not going to talk too much about it here because that is my other job, my other role. Um, but I just wanted to fill you in a bit on why I've been so absent and, and what's been going on. As I say, it is all positive, certainly from my perspective anyway. It's a good thing. Um, I had, as you know, stepped away from the classroom due to my health and I had a very nervous couple of months trying to get a job, applying for so many admin jobs. You'd think as a fully qualified English teacher with 10 years experience, I would get an admin job fairly quickly. You know, it didn't have to be the most amazingly paid job, just something to to pay the bills while I was sorting out the project bag and, and looking after myself. But um, yeah, this I, I was almost at my wits end and then this turned up and it's just been wow just just wow <laughs> if ever you get the chance to come down to Faversham and visit the yarn dispensary do it is the most beautiful store it used to be a pharmacy it's been lots of things but up until about 1980 it was a pharmacy and it's a listed building but different bits of the building were built at different times so different bits are listed for different things it's a bit confusing so the building was built in 1240 and it's kind of got wonky 
wonky walls and things but then also the windows at the shop front are Georgian and they're listed separately and then we've got the original um we've got the original I'll put some pictures up but you've got the original um fixtures and fittings from the pharmacy as it used to be and that's listed so we can't do anything to that and tidy them up particularly but they're just I mean look at them it's just beautiful so yeah what a privilege to get to work there um, yeah, so podcasting is probably going to happen once a fortnight for the next few months because not only am I finding my feet running a yarn shop, what? Um, but I'm also waist deep at the moment, almost neck deep in preparations for the Wool Monty Festival, which is coming up in about four weeks in, in June, 15th, 16th June. And then after that, I will be getting the shop ready for the autumn winter season and also preparing for um also preparing for perth festival of yarn because i haven't podcast since this was a thing but and since it was all announced but i am vending at perth festival of yarn and i am beyond excited you anyone who's been watching the podcast for any length of time will know how special that festival is to me it was my first trip away um after after losing Lara and I just felt so loved and welcomed and looked after. I have made some of the most incredible friends, um, you know, Ellen, Marcus, Hutch, I met face to face for the first time, um, who's Dye Candy, Corolla, a whole host of people, Aileen, Amy, Ellie, it's just wow. Um, and it really did give me the oomph to really push forward with the project bag and to have come full circle and gone from being a visitor sort of feeling a bit bewildered and you know can I really do this to actually having built up a business and built up enough of a profile to be to, to go as a vendor is just amazing um so I'm sorry for the next 120 odd days you are going to get me increasingly excited in the lead up to Perth um and as uh, the other thing I can say as well is that actually um, Steve Malcolm, who is Mr. Hugs, who I'm sure you'll have heard about from um, Perth Festival of Yarn, because he's a tutor there, is actually also going to come and visit the yarn dispensary in June. And so, so excited about that. Um, he's going to come and stay for a few days and I'm going to show him around Kent and he's going to come to knit night and we're gonna have a seminar and a workshop and I'm just so excited to get to meet him. He's the most lovely chap, he really is. Mr. Hugs, he's the cable king. So I'm sure you are more than full of hearing about that, about the new job. As I say, I will be podcasting less frequently over the next couple of months because there's just so much going on. Um, but I will get back into a routine. I just need things to settle down a little bit. I'm I'm obviously not just running the shop, but I'm having to learn so much at the same time as I go. So it's 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 pretty intense, but I've got a fabulous team. I've the owners of, of the yarn dispensary are just such great people to work for. Um so it is. I'm I'm really well supported and everyone who shops there has been so lovely and welcoming and ah oh, I'm gonna get emotional <laughs> but yeah wow just that's why I hope that's a good enough reason for you as to why I've been absent for quite so long thank you for your patience shall I get on and show you some squishies because I have some other stash acquisitions to share with you I had as I have mentioned a birthday yes it was my birthday in April and I was sent some rather lovely things I've already shared with you my whoops nearly knocked myself out with it Fiber Spates blush, which I'm really excited about. Can't wait to cast on. I've already shared the coop knits that I treated myself to, the Soxia DK. Um, I was also given this for a birthday present from the lovely Catherine, who is Madcap Kitty Glitter. And it's just lovely. It's my first skein of Unbelievable, and it's the most beautiful blues. It just looks like an oil painting of an ocean, doesn't it? It's absolutely stunning. Can't, no idea what it's going to grow up to be. Love it. Thank you, Catherine. 
also in stash acquisitions um i have a mini skein of hedgehog fibers can't find it we'll show you another time <laughs> and um i also have a lovely magazine that was sent to me by ellen my friend Ellen, which was a, just a lovely, lovely gift for my birthday as well. She also gifted me two skeins which are on my Edinburgh vlog, but I will flash them here as well, just in case I don't get around to actually editing that. Um, so Victoria and Ellen were very, very naughty at EYF. I wasn't buying anything. I eventually decided I would buy a mini skein as a like a postcard, effectively, a souvenir. And I went around the marketplace. We were shopping with Ellen. She was shopping for various things. And I was kind of narrowing down my mini skein. And I thought I'd look on Friday, buy it on Saturday, spread the joy. And I picked this. And I was all set. Isn't it gorgeous? I was all set to go back and buy it on the Saturday and then on the friday evening as we were packing up tori and ellen were stood there with a little bag and started singing happy birthday bearing in mind it's almost a month early and presented me with the very mini skein that i had chosen for myself they're such naughty girls but wow thank you not only that but they had also chosen for me a whole skein of vicky brown designs that's who the minis buy as well and it is just gorgeous it's called hendrix which is actually it's a gin um but i don't know if that's what it's for it's not hendrix with an x like Jimi hendrix it's hendrix as in the gin but i don't know if it is a gin reference or not it's just beautiful again no idea what it's going to grow up to be but there we are and then finally um last by no means least i got to hang out with my lovely lovely friend amy on local yarn shop day we had already planned to go shopping together at the yarn dispensary um and then i went and got a job there <laughs> so i said still come we'll still shop but i but i'll kind of have to work so she came down for local yarn shop day and spent the afternoon with me um and sat knitting in the shop and then she came back and we hung out and did some more knitting, which was awesome. And I couldn't believe this, but she is such a sweetheart. Look what she gave me. Isn't that gorgeous? If I hide behind it, it might focus. This is a skein of hand spun yarn that she has spun herself. And she has these gorgeous labels here. Um, it says Three Waters Farm, Merino Silk 8020. And it's called Walk in the Park, February 2019, 345 yards. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I think she said, was it a two-ply? It's a two-ply. Not sure what it's going to be. She has knit herself some socks. Ooh, focus please. She has knit herself some socks out of her handspun, which just look absolutely gorgeous. But um, I think this is too nice. It might, it might become a head thing. What do you think? Head thing or a neck thing? Head, neck, head or neck? What do you reckon? At the moment, I'm just keeping it in my stash box and stroking it and just thinking how lucky I am to have such wonderful friends. Um, I can't believe it. I can't believe I've got hand spun yarn and it's just so beautiful and even and I can't spin like this <laughs> I am very talented I spin on my drop spindle um Aaron weight to lace weight interchangeably totally mean to <laughs> I have bunny blockers I picked these up I was talking to I'm gonna get the name wrong I can't remember the name I'll put the name down here about sock blockers and she said she could send me some that I could use obviously I bought them that I can use for the festivals and so she has done these bunny sock blockers for me um very excited about those and they're so cute bunny. all right that is it for creative content and acquisitions I am going to have a shop update on the 15th of May thank you so much to everyone who's been shopping with me since my last update it's just blown me away um i must admit amy did share a skein of my grubby goldfish on her podcast because she is cranking some sock snakes for me for my first show she's such a most she's such a wonderful human such a wonderful friend um and that's sold out so i've had to dye some more but that's drying but i thought i'd show you 
I thought I'd show you some of my new colourways um, that I'm dyeing up ready for the festival, but will also be available in my shop. So this one, whoa, <laughs> blooming heck, I should probably have warned you how bright that's going to come up. Are you ready? Got your sunglasses on, folks. <laughs> there we are. This is so unlike me to dye something like this, but look how bright that is. Wow. Um, this, funnily enough, was actually an attempt at dyeing one of my spring into summer colourways, but I had too much dye and it came out really intense. <laughs> I just think that's so fun, isn't it? But yeah, so I've got a few skeins of that available. I'm going to have to dye some more at the moment. They're one of a kind, but I'm hoping to make them repeatable because they are just so fun. Like, it's like a summer summer fiesta, really, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Um, next, this is a one of a kind because it didn't turn out as I wanted. Um, this beautiful thing. You know, I said the other one, Unbelievable, was like an oil painting of the ocean. I was actually looking at an oil painting of the ocean to try and create this, and it's just gone too green. Um, so it's not what I aimed for, but it's still rather pretty. It's not properly skeined, as you can see. It's still got my... Um, plastic tag thing for when I dye the yarns you don't when you're dyeing yarn you don't want to be plunging your hands into hot pans of water obviously um, and if you try and use like a scooper thing you can you can agitate the yarn too much and not them so using using um, cable ties like this is really helpful because you can kind of scoop it out and then use it to dunk the yarn and and help the the twists but look at that that's i mean i don't know it's kind of like the painting of the ocean i was looking at um it's just not quite what i'd hoped for it's pretty it is pretty isn't it but um yeah so at the moment that's one of a kind be available in the shop a couple of skeins of that then i've been dyeing up some of my repeatable colorways as well including aurora borealis this is a really um variegated version this is more like the original one the first one I ever did um if I give it a quick it's not gonna be very neat because it needs rescaining it does need rescaining it's got a bit spaghetti like in the pan but can you see that I've completely unscaned it then <sighs> editing is gonna be fun <laughs> all right let me try and do this Okay, so it is more like the very first one I ever did. Aurora Borealis, really pretty. Um, the thing to bear in mind with hand dyed yarns is even if they are repeatable colourways, because it's a human doing it, um, they're going to look different each time. So that's Aurora Borealis. I then have this new one. You've got to excuse the mess because I didn't have any cable ties. This is this is why you use cable ties. God, that is so bright. <laughs> um, this is why you use cable ties, because if you don't, then you end up with spaghetti. But this is another new colourway. It's coming up very hot pink on here. It's not quite as hot pink as that in real life. I mean, I am recording this using daylight and not using my um, studio lights because it is a summer's evening now. So we've got the light. I have also been dyeing more of my Myra colourway, which is proving very popular. So there will be more skeins of that available. Grubby Goldfish is dying, no, drying upstairs. Whoa, that sounded sinister. And I have, you know what I said about them being different each time? I have one of my summer, spring into summer speckled colourways, but I sneezed, okay? I sneezed. I was wearing my respirator, so it's not like I sneezed over the arm, but when you're trying to speckle and you sneeze and make a sudden movement, you end up more with splodges rather than speckles. But you know what? I love it. So here we have a couple of skeins of quite intense from my spring into summer speckle colourway. It's another skein that I'll be able to show you. I've left them at the shop because they arrived at the shop today. Um, the sock snakes that Amy cranked for me. I'll be able to show you what that will look like then. Um, I'm really sorry if I'm not looking at the camera enough. Um, it's been so long since I've recorded that actually I'm forgetting all the things like how the autofocus works and um, 
where best to hold up yarn so I'm actually looking at the camera a lot as well I, I don't normally do that I'm really sorry I will get back into it we will be back to full what sits again soon but there we are okay um and then also we have lace weight oh see look it's gone out of focus again this is just so unprofessional there we are we have the lace weight yarns i've dyed up some new colorways i also have and i absolutely love this and i it's this is proper spaghetti um now my lace weight base is 80 percent silk no 80 percent merino 20 percent silk um and one of the things I love about it is it's 1600 meters. So 1600 meters of this absolute gorgeousness. Um, this is proper spaghetti. It's an absolute pig to die. Um, because even if you're really, really careful, and I am so careful in the dye pots, it just goes <laughs> and uh, gets itself into a muddle. So every single skein. <laughs> Sorry, every single skein needs reskeining. Um, but I have this gorgeous kind of pewter grey, shimmery colourway. I absolutely love it. Um, I was actually chatting to Amy when I was dyeing this, and I said, anyone who watches Amy's podcast knows that she's a lover of grey. Um, and I said, you know what? I must be channeling my inner Amy because I've dyed my first grey colourway. And you know what? I really like it. Um, Alan says it reminds him of um, raw tie -in. Do you know what I mean? How that colour changes a bit. And what else have I got in here? I've got this kind of coppery. Oh, God. See, this is what I have to deal with. <laughs> the dyeing process is quite intense. You've got to soak the yarn. You've got to then dye the yarn. Let the yarn cool naturally. You've got to wash it to wash all the mordant out that you use. Give it another wash to check its colour fast. And then if it looks like that, you've got to spend about 10 hours untangling it and rescaling it. But um, if I show you, it's kind of a rust brown colour. It's just so pretty. And I think a fine shawl with beads would just look stunning with this. I'm, I'm that sort of person. You know, like has anyone ever done any Christmas shopping or birthday shopping and for other people and they like what they've bought so much they genuinely consider keeping it for themselves? I am shopping my own yarn <laughs> but I suppose that's a good thing isn't it because if I like it then hopefully you guys will like it as well there'd be no good me going oh that's horrible and then selling it um so yeah that's that's it there is going to be a small shop update on the 15th of May um I don't even know what day of the week that is it's probably midweek or something ridiculous actually it's the 8th today it must be next Wednesday um there will be a small shop update uh yeah and that that's it really that's everything um somehow this has ended up being 54 minutes i'm sure there'll be lots of editing i just want to say thank you if this isn't the sort of podcast you're used to from me i'm really sorry i'm so out of practice i've had a lot to process and deal with in the last few weeks um we've had some anniversaries as well as i'm sure you'll be aware um and I just want to say a huge thank you to, your, to you for your patience, to everyone who's come along and checked out the Yarn Dispensary's Instagram page since I made my announcement in the middle of April, and to everyone who has continued to support the project bag. I mean, I am working at the Yarn Dispensary, but it is, does not mean that the project bag is going away. It's very much my business, my company, the project bag, and I am here to stay. And I'm dyeing yarns, making bags, bringing you podcasts and hopefully releasing some more patterns very very soon everything's been put on the back burner for a minute while I've been getting used to my new role um but everything's settling down now um and I probably look like I'm fake smiling all the way through this because my, my cheeks are hurting because I'm smiling so much but wow it's it's been one absolutely crazy ride since I first walked into Perth Festival of Yarn in September. In fact, even before that, before I turned up a year late for Chester Wool Open Day when I was going to look at undyed yarns, it has been the craziest um, seven months, coming up eight months. From, from then, I've gone from 
sort of starting, it was July last year I started the podcast. So I've gone from starting a podcast really tentatively and very emotionally because I was talking about some really emotional things in, in that first podcast, um, as I'm sure many of you know, to starting the Etsy shop with my handmade project bags, to going to Perth and meeting the most incredible people, to going to to dyeing my own yarn after Amy <laughs> announced on her podcast that I dye yarn and pretty much shoved me out of that nest, um, to visiting Edinburgh Yarn Festival, to doing Vlogmas or attempting to do Vlogmas, we won't talk about that, my laptop blew up, I mean, you know, to being accepted to the Wool Monty and Perth Festival of Yarn, seeing people at EYF, just wow, launching my own patterns, now landing this job in the most amazing yarn shop ever. I'm sorry, all other yarn shop owners. I have yet to meet one that I prefer to this. <laughs> and I felt that before I um, started working there. And it's just been a crazy, crazy ride. And thank you so much to all 200 odd of you who've joined me on this ride and are continuing to support me, continuing to support the podcast and the project bag. Um, I would really appreciate it if you could give me some help and if you could like this video if you have enjoyed it, don't worry if you haven't, um, if you could subscribe, join the Ravelry group, share things that you see, you know, maybe recommend the podcast to people if you think that they would enjoy it as well, I don't want you to start spamming people but if you are enjoying spending time with me and you are enjoying my hand dye yarns and the journey that I'm going on then it would be awesome if you could support me by doing that. You, I mean, obviously you've got the option to, to shop with me if you wish, but there are so many ways in which you can support me as this journey continues without spending a penny. So a thumbs up, a subscribe, you know, talking on social media, sharing the podcast, recommending it, following the project bag on Instagram, all of those things would just be a massive help and help me continue to build up everything I'm trying to do. I, yeah, it's like I say, it's been a crazy, crazy ride and I wouldn't be here without you lot. You are just the most fantastic people. Um, I'm fully aware that some people use podcasts as their way of relaxing or to get them through hard times. I did that myself and it has been such a privilege being able to meet some of the podcasters that helped me through some tough times and actually tell them, you know, thank you. Um, but actually you guys have supported me and built me up and I am so grateful to you all for that. I can't begin to tell you. Um, I'm at risk of getting emotional, so let's not do that, shall we? I'm going to wish you a very creative, crafty week. Send you so much love, and I will see you in a couple of weeks for another crafty chat. Bye.